Wainbridge was going out with a lingerie model, uh, and then JT smashed her. I think that, that's literally the story. <laughs> <laughs> But they were good pals. They were good pals. I think that's what... <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to The Dugout. We've got a crack of an episode in store for you this week. Uh, Luke, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm going to keep this one brief, yeah, because um, I've taken a break out of my revision. Uh, my life is pretty dry right now, so I don't want to talk about it. Nice, mate. Well, if it, if it makes you feel better, today I, I went outside and uh, walked in, walked in, walked out of my house and stepped in a massive pile of dog shit. What we talk? It, does it seem like a big dog? Yeah, I, I just think it should be punishable by death. What? What? Not picking up shit? Uh, fair enough. If you're in the park or in the woods, just flick it to the side or something. Mm. Maybe not the park, but like it's just right in the middle of my street, like in the road. So someone's, you know. Unless the dogs go out on its own and just shat in everywhere. But someone's responsible for this, and I'm going to find out who. I, I know who's responsible for stepping in the dog shit. It's you. Your spatial awareness is off. I'm, t- I'm talking about who, who left who left the dog shit. That's not the problem. I should be able to walk around freely without the threat of stepping in the turd, mate. Anyway, we've got a great episode coming up. We've got some good, good segments to do. First one, before we talk about the weekend's action, and we're going to go into... A challenge I've wanted to do for a while. If football clubs were supermarkets, which supermarkets would they be? I've got some that I think really match up. Luke, do you want to kick us off with this one if you've got any? Yeah, uh, I've got a few here and I'm trying to see which one I want to go for first. I'll go for this one first. I'm going to go Aldi. And I think the club that they best represent right now is uh, Newcastle United. Uh, Supermarket for the people. Um, everyone's got a soft spot for them, uh, growing exponentially and about to take over the game. Right. I, I, do you know what? I've, I'm going to completely disagree with you there because I've well, got Newcastle down as a completely different supermarket. Okay. Do you want to tell me what you've gone for? Amazon Fresh. Oh, so I've got I've got them down as someone else. But go on, tell me why. I've gone for Amazon Fresh because it's like Newcastle, they're just sort of backed by loads of money. Yeah. Like Amazon Fresh. Mm. And it's all, you know, it's a new it's a new thing. You know, it's a new Newcastle. Yeah. I actually went in Amazon Fresh for the first time last week, which was quite a scary experience. There's just no one there. Like no customers, no staff. And you just sort of walk in and walk out. And then I didn't buy anything, but it sent me an email telling me I hadn't bought anything. But it was if I did pay... I was thinking, where would I, where do I pay if I buy something? And you just don't. You just walk out and it charges your car. And I've got no idea how it works. I, I think like the idea is good, but because I've never done it before, I'm just never going to go in there just because in my head it's going to be too much hassle. Like, do I need an account? Yeah, you have to have an Amazon account. I can't be asked. Oh, fair enough, mate. Yeah, well, you're not missing much. The meal deal selection wasn't wasn't all that. I, I actually have gone for Amazon Fresh as, as well, but just a different club. So I, should I just tell you who they are? Go for it, mate. What what club? Different reasoning, right? I've gone for Manchester City. Uh, they may well be the best and shiniest supermarket, but no one cares. Um, no diehard fans. Empty stadium. Yeah, I well, I I've gone for City as well, but I've gone for them. I've gone for City as the co-op. Ooh, because uh, right. everything in there is so expensive, no one really rates it, and you pay more for the the quality you get. It's quite shit, and also all the branches are really small. Like, have you ever seen a big co op? Mm, no. no, so it's obviously a chain. Yeah, I, I wanted to get co op involved, but I just couldn't. I couldn't really nail down who I uh, who I wanted, and obviously, um, Waitrose was another one I was toying with. But I'll, I'll give you my third. Um, it's Iceland. Once a powerhouse, now shite with no class. So I've gone for Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Quite irrelevant. I like that. That's nice. Quite irrelevant. Like once were shiny and everybody wanted a piece, but now it's you know, d- diminishing. I've gone for Chelsea. I've gone for Chelsea as Waitrose. Ah, oh, it's just it's a classic. It's a it's an obvious one. I don't even really need to spell it out. Uh, you only shop there if you're rich. And that's been the case for a long time. They're not new to this. Uh, they're spending money for fun like it doesn't exist. So Chelsea is Waitrose. I've also gone for uh, Sainsbury's. I've gone for Man United. You know, 
historical UK institution of Sainsbury's. Yeah. So it's solid. It's a solid choice, I think, Sainsbury's. Yeah. No, I, I, I can I can concur, concur with that one. Uh, but going back to your earlier point of uh, Waitrose, I would like to th- ask you a question. And which club do you think has the most Waitrose goers per capita? Fulham. Yeah, I, I would. I'd have to say Fulham or Chelsea would be the ones at the top. MK Dons was maybe another one. MK Dons. Actually, no, no. Sorry, Reading. Reading. Reading's a shout. Yeah. Well, Sainsbury's and Tesco would be like the big two yeah. in my eyes. So I reckon that would probably be Man United and Liverpool. What was I was going to say, I saw a tweet the other day as well. And it said, which club do you reckon has the most people with link- LinkedIn gold memberships? Ooh. Yeah. I think West Ham would have a lot of recruiters. Did you see the um, the West Ham fan getting knocked out? Oh. No, sorry. The Chelsea fan getting knocked out by the West Ham fan. That, that, that was great. How do you think he'll be feeling right now? <laughs> Well, a second video has come out now, and he's in the he's in the back of an ambulance with his mum, and he's like, Wee. it's embarrassing because like the with whole his country, mu- with his mum? yeah, his mum's in the back of the ambulance with him. I didn't realise his mum was there. I think well, she's older. Are you sure it's his mum? <laughs> I don't know. It was just a random old woman. He's probably just been discharged from hospital or something. Oh right, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you. So apparently um everyone's comparing the kid that knocked him out to, to Ben Mitchell. Just well, purely because he had glasses. And he's a West Ham fan. I've been on the end of some glasses related abuse in the last couple of years, so I understand what this guy's going through because everyone's saying all the comments were how embarrassing, I can't believe you've been knocked out by this specky twat. <laughs> So it's the age-old thing. If someone wears glasses, you'll imagine, you'll immediately assume they're not hard. I was in London once wearing my glasses, and um, a homeless woman shouted at me, and she was like, "Oi!" Like in my face, come up to me in the street, and I was like, "What do you want?" And she was like, "Fuck off, four eyes." No reason. No reason. I think I was going to the cinema or something, so I'd want to have a hundred percent vision for that. Yeah. So I don't like I can walk around happily all day not wearing them, but just wore them and just got abused, mate. And it needs to stop. It's I wouldn't say it's up there with racism, mm. but it is ableist. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Like a man can't see on on that guy that video. That guy, it like I think it resonated with a lot of people. Yeah, because I hate those who go to football and think that they're in Green Street or like some other fucking hooligan firm yeah. and they're not that you just just go yeah. and enjoy the football because one of the reasons I don't like I'm not as invested into like going to games is because it's just full of people like that like like giving it the big one but don't yeah. really want to fight who what, why are you fighting for basically why the fuck are you fighting I completely agree mate I think it's one of the saddest things that you can possibly do mm. I think that guy got what he deserved yeah. I think you'll think twice before starting on a person with glasses again because we are a solid mm. solid bunch <laughs> I was segueing on to that then we can start we can chat about the weekend's action um, where are we going to start what are we going to start with let's start with our old favourites Arsenal shall we yeah. is the downfall is this it They've got City on Wednesday night. Well, first things first. It, I think it's happening. I, I truly think I think Arsenal crumbling in February is is known as Premier League heritage. Mm. Uh, they're not going to win the league. Um, <laughs> you, you don't you don't win the league by getting one point off off Brentford and Everton. Uh, I think this is it. I think it's over. I feel like we should probably discuss the VAR. There's actually a good chance that there's a five point swing this week because. That penalty, or that, yeah. that goal was given, and then their confidence is low. City smash them on Wednesday. That could be huge. Howard Webb's already apologised to Arsenal because. for the decision. I didn't even know Howard Webb was still doing this shit. I thought you were going to say he's apologised for Wednesday. It hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's apologising already. Yeah, well, I, do you know what? I, there were a lot of VAR mistakes this weekend, but I'm, I'm really happy about it because... Uh, Suchek actually made a diving save in the box, yeah. which somehow didn't get didn't didn't get clocked. Like I, I, I did. I just don't understand what the reason is for that. I mean, it's against my team, and I'm still just like so. I'm I'm the most unbiased fan. West Ham sport ever. I think we're shit, and uh, I don't think we deserve anything. So what the fuck was that about? How is that not a handball? Like honestly, I watched it over and over and over again. And it 
proper look like it hit his knee. I'm not, I've seen photos that look like it, I, I, that makes it, his, I can see it's his yeah. hand, but there's a replay that it makes it like really hard to tell if it's a fucking handball or a knee. Also, that shot was not going in. It doesn't matter if it was going in or not. He's done a diving save in the box, mate. Uh, what do you mean? Like, what? This is no, the point we're talking about. It doesn't matter if it looked like in full speed it might have hit his knee. Yeah, yeah. They have a fucking room with 27 <laughs> TV cameras with different replays on. They should be able to tell. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a fair point. So the chick is 27. He looks about fucking 39. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks Are quite... you sure about that? I'm... Well, someone told me he was. Mate, I'm 28. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he's like... Mate, he looks about 39. Yeah, no, he looks old. Well, he he looks like he's seen a lot of shit, basically. Something dodgy's going on there. Yeah, he's in our year at school. Okay, yeah, Tottenham. <laughs> Tottenham losing 4-1 was the sole reason that I watched Match of the Day this weekend. It was incredible. <laughs> like, what the hell? I saw a clip of um uh, on Soccer Saturday of Tim Sherwood. He said he described Pedro Poro's positioning as disgusting. <laughs> this is the guy's debut. <laughs> I haven't seen the full debut, but what he was saying was outlandish. <laughs> he fucking hates him. Those last two results um, for Spurs are potentially the most Spurs things you could do because, like at the moment, Liverpool are just being shit, and because of that, I'm losing interest. However, with Spurs, there's always something that's keeping you. Keeping you in, you know they'll 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 win an FA Cup tie. Yeah, they'll beat City, but at the end of the day, that it's always going to make you miserable. And this time it was a four-one battering yeah. from Leicester. I don't even know if they've scored four goals against anyone this year. Right, and we've got Champions League coming back this week as well. So let me just get the fixtures up. Do you know who have Liverpool got? I actually don't know. You don't know this. That is absolutely awful. You're meant to be a Liverpool fan. You're playing Real Madrid tomorrow night. <laughs> and I don't even know. <laughs> we're not that it's not tomorrow night. It's not tomorrow because we wrong. can't imagine we were playing Everton it's, it's tonight. A, it's next. It's next. <laughs> Real Madrid tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, mate. Imagine how fuming Klopp would be about that. <laughs> You've got three games in three days, mate. <laughs> you got a Merseyside derby, Real Madrid, <laughs> and they're both away. <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> anyway, yeah. All right. Tomorrow we've got AC Milan v Tottenham. That's huge. I have no clue what's going to happen in this game. And you know what the best thing is? Like, there's no way you can tell what the score is going to be in this because both teams, <laughs> who fucking knows? Sometimes they're unreal and sometimes they're shit. But, like, the thing is, right? <laughs> Like hundreds of thousands of people will put like a hundred quid accumulate or something. <laughs> <laughs> they just lose it instantly because <laughs> they think they're good at betting. I know what you're going to get. Both of them are going to be shit and it's going to be one all or something. It's at the San Siro, which, yeah, the San Siro is getting, uh, getting knocked down. I swear it's been getting knocked down for years. That's what I've been saying that since it was built. Yeah, well, it takes a long time to... <laughs> mate, it takes a long time to knock a stadium down. <laughs> They're not just going to say, yeah, we're knocking it down, then do it the next day, are they? Well, people are in it. It's not a fucking tree. <laughs> no, you know, in the garden. Dortmund v Chelsea, that's going to be a cracker, mm. I think. I can see Chelsea winning that, and I don't know why. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't know. How, I have a feeling that Chelsea will do well in the Champions League. I also have a feeling that Spurs are going to do well against AC Milan, but they've got they've got strength in depth, and that no that Enzo Fernandez he played good well he last game good against West Ham. Yeah, he looked well against West Ham and yes. um, Felix. But then you say yeah, good. he looked good, but he could be he can they couldn't beat West Ham, mate. So yeah, I know he does look like he's going to be a solid player. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for our analysis of the Champions League. <laughs> Shall we move on to oh, yeah. our to uh, the Who Knows Ball draft? This is week three, which by my calculations, again, means that we're going to be doing the letter C. So we're going to be drafting it, picking players whose surnames begin with the letter C. But again, I can't stress this enough. This is about who knows ball. So we're not picking the best players ever. I want to pick some players that you might have forgotten about that used to be good, that used to run rings around everyone, that would be good in a five-a-side team. At the end, we'll decide who wins, or you will in the comments. I went first last week, Luke. It's your turn this week. So give me your first player that begins with the letter C, please. I'm very happy. I'm very happy that I've gone first just because I'm worried about losing him and he's 
my star man. It's uh, Santi Cazorla. Left foot, right foot. He, he's got it all. He's a five-a-side maestro. Yep. Okay. See, I knew you were going to pick Santi Cazorla. And I also like the way that before you made your pick, you were like... <sighs> Like I didn't already know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I'm glad you chose him because I've got just the answer, though, to Santi Cazorla. My first pick is Lee Catamol. No. That's my defender gone. Yeah. Completely nullifies the threat. And do you know what he's going to be doing? He's going to be man-marking Santi Cazorla all game, which is going to be hell for Santi Cazorla. I think I'm on the front foot here. So go for it, mate. Give us your second. I'm going to go for Johan Kabai. Newcastle version. Oh, that's a nice one. It goes without saying that all these all these players will be in their in their prime. There was a there was a point where like he was genuinely hot property. He was scoring so many goals. He played with PSG as well, didn't he? Yeah, he went to P- got the big money move, mate, and then went then went to Palace. Yeah, my second player. I'm gonna go for Joe Cole. Ah, nice. Yeah, he's another player that was on my list. I believe Joe Cole may be the ultimate five-a-side player of all time, if we're talking yeah, UK. I think Sani Cazorla. Yeah, if we're talking UK, then maybe, yeah. I, I, if we're talking UK, I'm not talk, I'm not expecting Joe Cole to go to like Rio de Janeiro and tear it up in the favelas. You know, I'm talking like Basildon Power League. You know, I think he'd run it. Well, uh, I need a striker. And so I'm going to go for Dribbiel Cisse. Can you just pronounce his first name for me again? Dribble. <laughs> <laughs> the dribble. Drib- dribble. Is it dribble? <laughs> dribble. Gibral. That it's j- it's gibril. 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 So do we do we brill? We... Okay, yeah, good choice, yeah. mate. Obviously, po- uh, pre-injury. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got one-legged Gibril Ciso. Okay, so you've got Kabaya Kazola and Gibril Ciso. I am going to go for Tim Cahill. That is my pick. Terrible pick. I knew you were going to choose these sort of skillful players, so I'm just going to try and nullify the threats by just kicking the shit out of you. <laughs> I need someone who's going to go around and, you know, he's not going to beat around the bush. He's going to throw himself about. And for that, I'm going to go for Diego Costa. That's really good. That's a really good choice. I didn't even have him on my list, and I don't know why. Yeah, because also if it kicks off, like off, at least we've got him. Like he he will take on at least two men at once. And I'm sure at some point it will kick off. Imagine, right? So Costa versus Catamol. Who's money on? Costa's just a bit bigger. Like Catamol's probably more nuts and probably had more scraps, but Diego Costa's got pure size on him. Nice. I like that choice. I like. Yeah, you're thinking outside the box a bit this week as well. Yeah, thank it's you, good. Alex. Right, that leads me to go with my final my final pick. Now I'm I'm sticking to my usual game plan of not having a goalkeeper because I just find it so boring. So I'm gonna go with a defensive player and purely because he's a centre back that once scored a bicycle kick, I've gone for Sebastian Quartes. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's terrible and an oath, but he did do that. On his debut as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was against QPR. Yeah, I remember that. Right, out if I give you if you give me a number between one, two, and three, that will that will choose my player. Two. It's uh, Esteban Cambiaso. That is crap. Sorry, mate. That's <laughs> crap. I no. Uh, can, I, can I swap it? Can I swap first, it? No. Nah. But you've made your choice now. That uh, is absolutely that's probably your... the worst number you could have gone for. In the spirit of things, though, mate, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna go two. You selected number two, which means my fifth and final pick of the draft is Lee Carsley. Lee Carsley? He's shit. I actually have to to Google to see his face again. I've gone for serious no-nonsense this week. We've just a tiny bit of flair. But guys, in the comments, right. Who knows ball draft week three. Let us see who wins. My team or Luke's team? My team is Joe Cole. Tim Cahill, Sebastian Quartes, Lee Catamol, and Lee Carsley. It's no nonsense. It's just, you know, get the ball out of the pitch, hoof it up to Tim Cahill. Little bit of flair with Joe Cole. And then we've got Luke's team. Johan Kabai, Santi Cazorla, Gibril Cisse, Diego Costa, and Esteban Cambiasso. Really imbalanced. Doesn't really know what, don't really know what they're doing. They probably don't even know each other's names. So <laughs> drop a drop a comment who wins this week. 
I think I've been whitewashed the last two weeks, but you know, I'm gonna try and try and wing things back this week. Right, that brings us to our final segment. Guys, if you watched last week, you will know that we do a trip down memory lane at the end of each episode. Last week we did 2008, this week we've got 2010. Anyway, Luke, do you want to kick us off, mate? What have you got for us? In, what's, what's in your memory bank in 2010? I wanted to first take myself back, so I need to remind myself of what age I was. So I was 15 years old, so I'm guessing you would have been the same. I think that was the, that was the age when I started like properly drinking. Drinking had made its way into my 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 headspace. I knew what it was. I'd done it a couple of times. Yeah, you're starting to get a bit more seasons to the game. Well, not the first. Yeah, well, yeah, it was the first year the the World Cup was hosted in Africa, South Africa, to be precise. Um, which I have to say, I, I reckon it has one of the best uh, World Cup songs of all time, which uh, was Nan waving flag. Yeah, it's actually K Nan, not Nan. <laughs> No, no, wait, no, you don't. It's a silent K. No, it's Kanan, mate. Kanan. Surely you can't just call yourself Nan. Surely, <laughs> but yeah, waving flag was a banger. I thought. Yeah, yeah, waving flag is. A, it's probably my favourite World Cup song of all time. This was. It was a really good World Cup for me. That that was that was a good one. But it was yeah, it was the, it was the first World Cup age wise where alcohol was involved. Yeah, we were like 15, 16. Well, arrest me if you want. But yeah, it's just what happens, isn't it? I remember like the first game was England USA. The first England game was England USA. <sighs> yeah, we went to my mate's house and watched it. And one of our mates like passed out before the game started. Like he drank, he drank so much. We had Stella Artois pint cans because it was his official beer at the World Cup. But anyway, after <laughs> that, he never came out of us ever again. Like, never. Like, he didn't come out. Like, just genuinely, it was the last time I saw him out. I used to see him at school all the time. Like, oh, what are you doing this weekend, mate? And he's just like, nah, nothing. Just never came out again. In that game, it was nil-nil. And then just in the middle of the game, 15 minutes in, there was a glitch and ITV played a car advert in the middle of the game. Everyone's like, what the fuck's going on? Why is there an advert on in the middle of the game? Mm. The game comes back on and Gerard's celebrating because he's just scored. So we missed the goal. Because of a car advert. Wait, are you sure everyone had that? Because I didn't have that. You, you did, mate. I promise you, you did. I think, yeah, you don't really remember the the, the advert bit that much because you're too happy that England scored. You're not going to be fuming, <laughs> are you? So I think everyone just forgot about it. But that 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 definitely happened. You can find mm. it on YouTube. While we're on the World Cup, there's one thing I need to touch on which annoys me because people still talk about it to this day. No, when people say, "Ah, oh, unlucky England." And then they always mentioned Frank Lampard's goal against Germany, which went over the line and wasn't given. And they say that that was the reason why we lost 4-1. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, like, we did not deserve a point or a fucking anything. Yeah, like, that was awful. Matt Upson scored for us, mate. That's how that's that's the level we were at. Matt Upson was playing. Yeah, and that, that Lampard goal went in. and it, Wasn't it? Yeah, that would have made it 2-2. Hmm. So we still would have lost four two. I'm yeah. not buying any of this stuff about no, because it would have changed the shape of the game and we might have gone on and won. No, we fucking wouldn't. They were a much better team. We were terrible. There's actually quite a few things that happened in this World Cup, so because I've got quite a few notes. It was also the year, yeah, that Octopus was predicting all the results. Yeah, did he? Did he get? Um, didn't he die recently? I think he might have. Yeah, yeah. It was something. It was, I'm pretty sure I heard some sad news I think news he died about him. in the World Cup. In, I think he died during the Qatar World Cup. It was actually mental, though. I swear he predicted every game. I think he did. Yeah. It's did mad. he do the scores as well? <laughs> no, he, yeah, he, he had. He had an acker on. Every bookies. There's queues outside every bookies in the country with everyone just following the octopus. Like <laughs> the, the octopus was telling people how many how many corners were there was going to be in the game. <laughs> no, 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 do you not think like there's nothing sadder like when when you're in the pub watching the game and your mates like going, "Come on!" when a, when there's a corner or like a throw on or an offside or something. Yeah, I just I just don't understand ga- football gambling no. in the slightest, really. I've done it. I've done, I did it a few times. I lost every single time, and I thought well, I might as well just chuck my money in the bin. Yeah. And yeah, you do get people that are like, "Yeah, I won. I won three hundred quid last weekend." It's like, well, all right. So show us. You know, when <laughs> yeah, gambling, and loss. they have that profit and loss thing where you. Yeah, you can see how much they've won in the year and they're like four grand down. And it's like, you might as well have just taken that four grand 
walked up down the high street and just put it in a fucking bin. There's people that are like, oh yeah, it's uh, it's Morecambe v Shrewsbury. I'm watching Morecambe v Shrewsbury, so I'm going to make it more exciting by putting a bet on it when I don't support either team. It's like, you've got a serious psychological issue. Do something, read a book, mm. go for a walk. Just when the, you know when the fun stops, stop. If you do find yourself watching like like streaming Chinese under 18s handball, <laughs> maybe it's time to 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 just to just pack it in. Yeah, yeah. All right. But anyway, back to 2010. So one more one more thing. This is not one more or oh, a few more things, but on scandals. Yeah, this was the year where it came out that John Terry had been smashing Wayne Bridges' wife. So I, I I think it might have happened in previous year or years, but yeah, this is when it quite came out, and that's when his name was tarnished. If it wasn't already, like he started going downhill from there. What so, happened? I'm not asking you like what position they did or something, <laughs> but like, can you what what? Wayne Bridge was going out with a lingerie model, uh, and then JT smashed her. I think that that's literally the story. <laughs> <laughs> But they were good pals. They were good pals. I think that's what... <laughs> JT, the old dog. Basically, what happened was, right, what happened was, right, Wayne Bush got out of his lingerie model and then JT smashed her. <laughs> sorry, Phil Mitchell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I really don't know if there's that much to it apart, apart from that. <laughs> that's actually how it was reported on, on BBC News. But, um... Yeah, so we've got. Um, I think he played for City at the time, did Wayne Bridge, and mm. um, I'm pretty sure he scored in when they played each other, and he and he and he and he didn't shake John Terry's hand, which in my <laughs> in my um. What after the game? No, like when they all line up. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne Bridge didn't shake his hand, and I just thought it made Wayne Bridge look like a massive loser. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't. Yeah, like why would you? It was fresh news at the time. I remember as well. It's kind of dangerous. He could have just. Like, There's some other scandals which are, are are like great from that year as well. So basically, Crouchy and Rooney both cheated on their missuses that year with prostitutes. But then I thought with Rooney that could just be any year. Uh, I don't really want to get into this. Wait, what? We could have a threat of uh, legal action, mate. You know, ev- everyone's uh, everyone's suing each other. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot some information. Uh, they were both pregnant at the time. <laughs> so was that the first thing you think of when you think of 2010 is this your trip down memory lane did you spend 2010 reading like the daily star gossip <laughs> no, reading okay and grazia <laughs> yeah hello magazine yeah well it's also the year that that, ex- that volcano exploded and like all planes all over the world got 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 cancelled do you remember that and it was really hot for like three days i only care if it's about footballers cheated on their missus with prostitutes fair enough mate <laughs> well we've got a few things that happen well portsmouth went went bust apparently in that year um yeah oh. i remember not i've just seen that pop up on this side i remember not giving a fuck at the time and i don't give a fuck now um <laughs> I, I, I don't think I, I think i give a fuck but i just don't think it was any surprise it was like did you? Portsmouth just were buying players like Kevin Prince Boateng, and then oh wow, they went bust. And Suleiman Tari, they had like some of the world's best players, and and they and their, their stadium was like ten thousand seater. Twenty ten sucked. It actually sucked, wow. mate. I remember that's just a shit year. You know, uh, two thousand and eight. I, I I when we talked about that last week, I was like, yeah, and two thousand nine as well. Good year. 2010, 2011, shit, overrated. Do you know why? Because that was the year that we had to do fucking exams for the first time. Yeah. We had to do GCSEs that year, do you remember? Yeah, yeah, but uh, but it was also the year we finished the GCSEs. No, that was uh, no. I, 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 how old were you when you finished? I think, I, I think in 2015, that's when I finished. 2011, we were in year 11, so that's how I work it out. It's just, yeah, and do you know what the worst thing about GCSEs was as well? They were so easy, mate. And like everyone was like, oh, you need to do revision. You need to do revision. Mate, it's literally like, 
the cats out on the mat kind of shit. It was just so <laughs> stupid. And not once has anyone been fucking bothered about what you got at GCSE. Yeah, yeah. I did German GCSE. I got an A. I can't speak a word of it, mate. It's yeah. absolutely preposterous. The system's corrupt. It needs to change. Also, I remember on that note, I remember sitting in an exam hall, yeah, doing a maths exam that I didn't want to do where I wasn't allowed a calculator. And, I'm, and it, there's a time limit of like an hour to do it. And I'm just like, why, when the fuck in my life am I going to have to like do this with no calculator, no yeah. access to the internet so I can't just look up the answer and I'm under pressure. Like, do they think like real life is like being on the cube or something? <laughs> like, it's just fucking ridiculous, mate. I, I just don't agree with exams whatsoever, yeah. which is why I did English at uni because there was no exams. <laughs> Are you done? No, run over. I'm done. Right, yeah, cool. I'm done. Sorry. Right. Yeah. You got any more memories from 2010 for us? Um, no, that was it. That's the, that's it. That we've just spoken about everything that did happen that year. That brings that section to an end. Join us next week. It's going to be. I think we get given a random year every week. I'm not sure if they correspond. We've only done it once before, so if there is a numerical pattern, we can try and work that out and decode it for.